Okay, we start with the new module, module 3 of the non classical MOSFET series, <coughs> and this will be on the metal semiconductor contacts and metal source strain junction MOSFETs. That is, instead of PN junction, we have metal semiconductor junctions for as the source and drain. Okay. Now, here we will discuss the properties of Schottky junctions in silicon, germanium as well as in compound semiconductors, how they are different. All of them are similar, but there are slight differences are there. Then Fermi level pinning effect on this Schottky barrier on the working of these metal semiconductor contacts. And then of course, MOSFETs using these metal source strain junctions. <coughs> so, the first question mark comes to anybody's mind is why do we need this type of change from the conventional PN junction to metal source strain junctions, particularly when you go for small scale or nano scale MOSFETs. For this purpose, I have put here the FinFET which we discussed last time. In fact, the idea is this is the diagram which I showed last time. Now, a simplified version of the three dimensional picture of that looking from the other side, you can see it is like this. Now, you can see you have got the source drain and this is the fin which connects the source and drain. In fact, the channel is formed there. And if I have the gate only in this portion, this is the oxide and and the polysilicon or metal gate that is in this. I am not showing multiple fins, only one fin. If I want to have multiple fins, that will come parallel to these fins, and the gate will be formed around that. Okay. So the inversion layer is formed just below this gate. That means the channel length is from here to here. That is the channel length wherever gate is there below that there is channel. The width will be that portion which is surrounding that channel like that. So, that is the width. It is not all round sometimes they call it also all round gate. It is there from all the three sides and here as I have already pointed out the thickness see this is the back gate this is the front gate you can think of. Usually you have it like this top gate and back gate. Now, you have it like this you can call this as back gate, this as front gate. In addition, you got on the top, but that is very thin. So, that means, you have got the SOI layer. This whole thing is SOI layer. You have prepared the whole thing by etching the SOI layer here. See, this is a buried oxide on which you had a SOI layer, layer. You have etched this portion and you have realized the transistor like this. One device I have shown. Okay. So, the width is whatever is surrounding that channel is the width of that that is h twice height plus the thickness of the fin width of the fin. So, whatever analysis that you do for double gate MOSFET holds good front gate and back gate you can use it. And the thickness of that SOI layer in that formula will be the width of this layer. Okay. So, that is the thing. Now, what why I have brought this out is this fin portion is very narrow and between the, the channel actually starts from here. This is not inverted or anything. Okay. This is this will be n plus doped up to that point, but because this is very thin you will have lot of resistance coming into picture rho L by A area of cross section to the current flow is less. Okay. You have to make it thin because you want this yes, that layer to be very thin when the gate comes in on that. So, you cannot make it wider. So, that that is where the series resistance comes into picture. That is where the problem is there when you go to smaller and smaller scale MOSFETs for which this FinFET is relevant. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the conventional MOSFET, there also you have the problem. There you have this uh, implanted region at an angle you implant to uh, change the doping concentration there and this thickness of the source region is less here. 
even here you would like to use shallower and shallower junctions because if you are scaling down in the in the lateral direction vertical direction also you must scale down otherwise there will be lateral junction formation will be there so you that is a it will spread laterally also if you diffuse deeper it will diffuse laterally also if you implant afterwards you are annealing that will move down it will move also laterally so you are making it shallower and shallower junctions so you make it shallower and shallower again you see current flow is in this direction i can just show that here see this particular portion again i put here there is a metal contact from the metal contact which is maybe silicide through this n plus region it flows into this channel here channel is here this is a gate this is the spacer layer that layer i have expanded it and shown the small region i put it like this to, to magnify the impact of this resistance i put it there okay so this diagram is same as what we have taken here junctions are made shallow especially at the gate edge here to reduce their encroachment into the channel that introduces lot of series resistance this portion now how can you reduce the series resistance you can reduce the series resistance by reducing the sheet resistance sheet resistance is defined as resistivity of the layer divided by thickness of the layer and what is resistivity rho 1 by sigma 1 by sigma is resistivity and sigma is q mu n into n d and x j is the depth of which is going so if i want to reduce that r that is this resistance that comes in here i can i can uh, reduce the rho or i can increase xj but increasing xj is not allowed because while scaling down the devices you want to scale down in the vertically also so xj you can't uh, you can't increase to reduce the thing you want to keep it low the only parameter that you can manipulate is rho rho depends upon 1 by nd doping so you can increase the doping already you are at 10 power of 20 doping concentration the source strain regions so you can't go beyond that point because the upper limit on this doping concentration is decided by the solid solubility limit means there is a limit up to up to which the material for example silicon can absorb the dopants without losing the crystallinity that is the solid solubility limit for example if you put uh, phosphorus you may get Uh, something like five times ten to the power of twenty per centimeter cube. If I am using phosphor boron for p-type, <coughs> you will get something like ten to the power of twenty solid solubility. So there is upper limit on that. So the only way you can reduce that resistance is go to a different material, change over for, from the semiconductor there, change over to metal. Metal will have lot of carry concentration. Twenty or twenty-two or even more of that order. So you can increase the carrier concentration very much. You can reduce the resistivity. You can reduce the series resistance. That is the goal. Okay. So shallow junctions increase the external resistance, abruptness of, and also in the case of this type of junctions, because the profile goes something like that gradually. It's not abrupt. If it is abrupt, you know you, you have got. entire layer has same doping right through so you have got a region where the doping is getting down to lower level so that's why if you put a metal the whole thing can be thin at the same time it will be just one sheet there you can put thicker metal if you like so that's the idea now further metal source drain contacts have further benefits one is parasitic resistance of source strain regions of conventional scale down mosfet whatever i have told i have written here is primarily responsible for reduction in the drive current how does this happen this equation whatever gate voltage you apply part of it goes to the so resistance in the source okay so what is available for creating the channel is less for a given voltage <coughs> so drive current gets reduced so speed of the device gets hurt if you can't drive a capacitor fast the speed it will be slowed down 
all these MOSFETs are required to drive the capacitors and charge them. So, they must have higher transconductance GM. GM is delta ID by delta V. For a small change in the input signal, the current should change quite a bit. That is indication of GM. Now, I do not know whether you remember this. If not, I will just put that uh, see how this you GM uh, due to the presence of IR RS res series resistance turns out to be GM 0 that is transconductance without the series resistance and RS it is related like this. Just quickly just, just maybe I can just go through that. Okay. See for example, if I take the MOSFET I have a resistance there R s that is the source resistance. Okay. Now, I have the V g s applied. Now, or I will say what we are trying to find out is V d d is there V d s what we are trying to find out is if I have delta V g s here, how much is the delta V g s here, how much is the delta V g s here. So, this is actually delta V g s 0. If R s is 0, delta V g s equal to delta V g s 0 and this drop is delta I d into R s. Okay. So, you have got delta V g s equals delta V g s z V g s 0 plus delta I d times R s. Okay. Now, divide right through by delta I d. See what I want is delta I d by delta V g s. So, delta V g s by delta I d is equal to delta V g s my handwriting is divided by delta oh my god that is really bad. Okay. So, that is uh, delta I d plus R s. So, this quantity first term is 1 by g m that you get and the second quantity is 1 by g m 0. G m you would have got 50 to are equal and plus R s. Now, you can see you can now go back and see that the g m. So, this is actually equal to g m 0 1 plus g m 0 times R s. So, now you can see g m is equal to g m 0 by 1 for that. So, this is what we have said there. So, what happens is now your g m becomes like that. So, it comes up by that. So, you can see if R s is large, G m is correspondingly reduced. Now, R s becomes larger because of these shallow junctions and fin fat all those things. So, the need there is a need for reducing that R s to increase the I d and also to increase the transconductance to increase the driving capability. So, replacing source strain regions of the transistor with the metals can reduce the series resistance effect. Now, we should see what it is going to be. Now, there are other benefits. One is series resistance gets reduced, other one is in a conventional transistor you have got N P N that is a bipolar transistor coming into picture. Okay. Particularly if you in the SOI device if you do not have the ground contact that is very much dominant. So, if I replace the junction the metal 
semiconductor contact, you do not have the transit traction, bipolar transit traction is not there. So, okay, that we will understand better when we after we discuss the uh, how that eliminates that when we discuss the metal semiconductor contact. So, and also because there is no p n junction, there is no minority carrier injection there, which to the substrate. All those effects which uh, you do not like are eliminated by putting a metal semiconductor contact. Still, we have got to see how it, whether it works like a transistor as a MOSFET. So, you can use abrupt atomically abrupt junction by using a metal on the surface. So, all those limitations of shallow junctions etcetera goes off with this. Further, if I am replacing this junction with a metal semiconductor contact, your processing temperature goes down because you are just evaporating metal. At the most, you may do some sort of annealing at about 400 degree centigrade. So, that way your thermal budget on the wafer is reduced. That is one of the very important things people worry about, try to process at as low temperature as possible to keep for a bigger wafer, wafer warp page etcetera is reduced if you process at low temperatures. You have to work worry more and more about this if you go, go to 8 inch, 12 inch okay, all the uh, effects you try to minimize. So, lower temperature do not be carried away low temperature, when usually when if you have to go to a physics uh, person specialist, low temperature he will immediately think cryogenic temperature, but we are talking of low temperature if it is 500, 600 degree centigrade is low for us for processing. Okay. So, this is actually just to show that really that type of devices have been fabricated. You can take a look at one of the papers which has come which, I, which gives a very good review even as 5 years back. Okay. Even now, that is a, a classic paper which we will refer. So, that is I put it here in IT blade transactions and electronic devices. It is a long paper which gives you the, some sort of review of the devices. Okay. This is a cross section, TM cross section of a 22 nanometer short key barrier source tail metal contact. Okay. This is the gate, and you have the, you can see the, I do not know you can see the dark portion there this is shown here by this portion. This is a platinum silicide which acts as a metal semiconductor contact. There is no junction. So, in the previous case you put some siliciding etcetera you do, how do you do? You have that there, n plus is there, junction is different, but now use that as the, use platinum silicide as the metal semiconductor contact. There you can get a junction like this which goes underneath that, you can get self aligned structures. We will come back to this when we go to transit traction. Right now, what we want to take a look at is this is a schematic of the short key, barrier, short key barrier. These are all the depletion layer bits. Let us not worry about it at this moment. We will have occasion to discuss details of this when we come to transistor. So, main thing that focus is you can get the metal semiconductor of this shape. Okay. You can get abrupt junctions here and you can get this. Uh, gate which is polysilicon and you have got the spacer layer on both sides that I am sure it has been elucidated in the previous lectures. So, you have got the spacer layer. So, that there is no sorting effect when you put this platinum. You can just lift off that from there and you have the platinum only here till side it will spread laterally underneath into that. Okay. But, it will not be like spreading to the junction, it will be just small spreading. Okay. Now, what are the requirements here? This metal semiconductor contact should form a very low barrier here. If it is a n channel device to the n type region, it should form a very low barrier. Why should it form a very low barrier? It should be able to inject electrons through that barrier, through the barrier. So, and also it, if it is a p type substrate, it should form a rectifying contact. So, there is requirements, it should make a good ohmic contact onto n type material, it should make a good rectifying contact onto p type material. Okay. So, when we have a inverted channel here, that should form a ohmic contact there. So, these are the requirements which I have put here and they are summed up in all whatever I have said is summed up here. 
three balls. You have a ten channel and three channel both. When you put a metal, you will have n channel there, so you must have a ohmic contact onto the n channel. If the p channel, you will have n type substrate p channel here, that should make ohmic contact to that. So, there are conflicting requirements here which can be met by how we will see. Okay. The idea may not be very clear right now, but when we talk about the metal semiconductor contact, it will become clearer. In fact, uh, few years back, people were not talking much about metal semiconductor contact. It was only a part of syllabus uh, where somewhere they put one uh, ten, 10 minutes discussion on that and proceed, but today it has become a matter of research, lot of discussion going on on that. Okay. Now, let us get on to quickly on to it is a very simple concept. You can go through that rather easily by discussing. First, when you say you need to have a low barrier height means it should be ohmic contact. So, on the channel you would prefer a metal con making ohmic contact. On the substrate you should have a rectifying contact. What are they? Ohmic contact low barrier height, rectifying contact formed high barrier height, higher barrier height. In MOSFET, metal semiconductor co conductor contact at the source should form an ohmic contact to the channel. Okay. Short key barrier junction leads to fundamentally different mechanism that is what I am just alerting right away. Now, ohmic contact I e characteristic like that everyone knows. Ideally, it should be vertical, zero voltage drop, but you can never get to zero. There will be finite resistance. Rectifying should give block current flow in this direction and it should allow the current flow easily. Ideally, it should be vertical here, zero there. You will never get that. So, now let us get down to discussion on the uh, all of you are familiar about the energy band diagram. So, it becomes easy to analyze this metal semiconductor contact with the metal semiconductor with the energy band diagram. This is a metal block, this is n type semiconductor they are two are separated, they are not connected, they are neither physically in contact nor electrically in contact. Okay. So, metal has got the Fermi level there and that is the vacuum level. So, what you do is you have the term called the work function difference, which actually is the energy difference between the vacuum level and the Fermi level. Virtually, it gives an idea how much energy you must supply to the electrons to take it away from the metal. Okay. See, for example, if you take a metal, if you heat up red hot, it emits electrons. Okay. That is, you are giving energy much more than that 4, 4 point pi electron volts energy by heating it red hot. If you see the old vacuum tubes, you will see that there is a filament which is heated, which is the source of electrons. Okay. So, that is the work function. I am. Now, semiconductor if you take the vacuum level is same here conduction band balance band n types so of Fermi level is closer to conduction band. Now, that is a term called the electron affinity that is chi that is the energy difference between the vacuum level and the conduction bandage and the work function of semiconductor phi s is the gap between the vacuum level and the Fermi level. Now, next what we do is, so we are taking a clay case where phi m is greater than chi s phi f like this. So, you can immediately say that if you join these two metals need not join keep them keep them close by connect this by external wire. Okay. It becomes a complete system. These are the definitions. So, when I connect them together, there is a gap that may be a small gap. Okay. This is a complete system. So, what happens is because the here because the Fermi level is above this and there are a lot of electrons at a higher level here occupied because it is n type, there is a lot of states available here. The electrons like, like in the p n junction electrons will get transferred from the n type region to its metal. 
So, leaving back a depletion layer plus charges behind here like that. The plus charge is the depletion layer a finite width here and the electrons have gone transferred onto this. I have put this negative charges here one negative charge I put here indicating there are if there are 10 charges here there will be 10 charges here. So, many electrons have transferred. Okay. Now, this is what happened to the energy band diagram? This layer is depleted. Metal, the number of electrons are very high. There will not be a layer, there will be a charge sheet of large concentration of electrons on the very surface itself. That is why you do not have a depletion layer or accumulation layer. There is a charge sheet there. Now, if you take the energy band diagram, this is n type, this is depleted, and plus charges are there through this gap the electric field will terminate onto the minus charge because plus charges will look for negative charges they are here because they have been transferred from you hit here. So, you have got a an electric field from the semiconductor to the metal surface here it is a distributed charge here on the metal it is a charge sheet completely. So, because there is electric field from this side to this side the energy, energy band diagram will be moving uh, in this fashion because this is negative, this is positive. So, if I have to take an electron from this side to this side further, it is more difficult because plus minus electric field is in from right to left. Therefore, it becomes difficult to take the electron from the right to left. That means, the energy band diagram will be moving up. This is getting back again to the basics. Similarly, the electric field will be maximum here, but it will be varying here. It will be linearly varying, potential will be parabolic. Like all the discussion that we have been doing, so you got the n type material here, and as you move from here to here, more and more depletion, okay, it becomes less and less n type. So, you can see the conduction band moves away from this Fermi level. Okay. So, conduction band moves away from the Fermi level telling that this is depleted and this energy band diagram is bent up here telling that the electric field is in that direction. Okay. So, and the delta is a gap. Now, what I do is these are standard textbooks everywhere you see these type of diagrams including the book which we had written Achyutan and but that also all the diagrams are there. Okay. So, I reduce this gap. The charge transfer to me is the same thing because this has happened till the Fermi level has equalized. You do not draw the Fermi level here in this insulating portion, you do not that does not have any meaning. So, you stop it there, they are equalized. So, if I reduce the gap, the charge here and charge here is not changed, but the gap is reduced. So, what will happen is the voltage is reduced. Field lines are same, number of charges here, number of charges are same thing because that has, that has helped it to transfer and bring the Fermi level equal. So, because the charges are same, the gap is reduced, the voltage drop is reduced. See the chi, see this is a vacuum level, whatever potential change is there in the energy band diagram here is reflected on the vacuum level also. Okay. Further reduced. I reduce it further, the voltage drop is reduced further. There will be a small voltage drop in that layer. If there is a this layer could be a small monolayer of oxide even present there, which usually is present. So, that is the thing. So, you have got electric field here, electric field here, there is a drop B i across this layer. Okay. Now, phi m is that work function difference here to the vacuum and there is a drop here or voltage rise here, this is the conduction bandage in the semiconductor chi is here. So, the vacuum level is slightly dipping here because there is a voltage drop, all the energy band diagrams bend, only this which does not bend is the Fermi level thermal equilibrium situation. So, phi m okay, and this particular height energy difference this actually 
pointed it written it as phi b n which is in electron volts. I call this as the barrier height for electrons. I call this as barrier height because if the electrons have energy greater than the phi b m after all in the metal at room temperature there will be electrons beyond this point they will be above the fermi level ok they will not only be here at 0 degrees of course there will not be electrons above that but at room temperature there will be electrons from here up to certain height ok now all those electrons which are having energies above this phi b n find a very thin layer they can cross this by tunneling. If it is 1 nanometer or of that order those electrons which have energy greater than that can tunnel. Okay. So, phi b n is the electrons which are having energy less than this that is phi b n they cannot cross because there is a this region there are no states there is an energy gap there is a band gap here. So, but here immediately it sees the available states in the conduction band of this. So, they can tunnel. Similarly, electrons present here can tunnel from here to here. So, we can discuss this ideally when you talk of the Schottky barrier or metal semiconductor contact you do not show this layer because that is not really coming into picture because carriers can tunnel from here to here and here to here. <coughs> okay. So, phi b n is phi m minus chi okay? if that drop is negligible if that drop is negligible it is phi m minus chi. So, normally do not show this gap. So, that is what you show. So, wherever you see the energy band diagram for metal semiconductor contact you will see only for n type like this. So, Fermi level of metal aligned with respect to Fermi level of silicon and there is depletion layer here depleted n type material has got plus charge and the minus charges are present here on the surface which will terminate on this. So, entire voltage drop is across the depletion layer here from so, here to here that is voltage drop. So, phi b n is that barrier height whichever what I have discussed that is phi m minus chi ok phi m minus chi is the phi b n that is 0 level. Now, wherever there is a depletion layer here under thermal, thermal equilibrium conditions you have got what is known as the built in potential just like in a p n junction. In a p n junction that is that is shared between the p type region and n type region here it is so entirely on the n side there is no voltage drop in the metal. So, this is a built in voltage. So, built in voltage is actually the voltage rise from here to here like this. if I know phi m work function of metal and if I know chi, chi electron affinity it is known for a given semiconductor. For example, for silicon it is 4.05 electron volts for gold it may be close to about 5 electron volts phi m. So, okay. so phi m minus chi is known because of materials there you can even measure it from the characteristics of the device. So, otherwise you, you can say once you know phi m and chi you know what is phi b n is. Now, once you know the doping in a semiconductor you know what is the energy difference between the conduction band and the Fermi level. So, phi m uh, phi b n minus E c minus E f gives you that q into V b i. So, built in potential is related, is related to the barrier height and the doping. If, if the doping is higher and higher this will not change, but the E c minus E f will decrease. So, therefore, your built in potential become closer and closer to phi b n. This is the idea. Okay. Now, let us just go further into thing. This is the uh, we will see that a structure like this a metal semiconductor contact n type material with the phi m larger than chi will act as a rectifying contact okay? because there is large barrier for electrons from 
either side. How does it work out? Let us see. Thermal equilibrium situation. I do not know whether you understand this type of diagram. I have redrawn whatever I have drawn here. I have redrawn here. Instead of putting this plus minus, I just put depleted layer and there is negative charge here. On the left hand side, I have shown the distribution of electrons because there will be in the metal energy levels will be there continuously, but the probability of occupation goes down from as you go from the Fermi level up. Let me just see whether I can I'll put that diagram. See what is happening in a metal is in a metal ok. You have got the Fermi Dirac distribution. How is the Fermi Dirac distribution? Energy versus probability of occupation if you take that is 1 this is F. Okay. Now, if you draw the Fermi Dirac distribution like that, it is half there at room temperature. At 0 degree, how is it? At 0 degree is like this. Okay, I just may redraw that. At 0 degree, it is F e is 1 here, F. it is like this below Fermi level all the levels are occupied above that they are not occupied. Now, let me just go back to this and see whether I can remove that. Okay. So, just to make it uh, oh my God. everything on let me just clear out everything. Okay. Just redraw that once again. F e and energy. Okay, that is zero. P e f. So above room temperature, it is this is one. So we will have it going like that. Probability of occupation is half there. That means there are if there are levels there, the implication is the the Fermi function. You write it as one by one plus it were E f minus E minus E f by k t that is the plot there. Okay, that is the Fermi function probability function. <coughs> so, when you write like this meaning is if there are levels present above that that will be occupied. So, in the metal you, what I have drawn is that is like that. In fact, uh, it will not be precisely like that it will be something like this that is uh, it will be going down something like this. Below that, I am not showing. That means, these electrons are they have got energy above the Fermi level. Okay. So, if there is a barrier, if there is a barrier like this, like this, okay. if I have a barrier in this fashion, that is the barrier phi b n these electrons above that can cross. There is nothing which prevents it from going from there to there. And if there are electrons on this side, they can cross on that side. Now, how is it in the conduction band? Semiconductor, you have the Fermi level here. <coughs> I am sorry, just I can put it like this. You have the Fermi level here. Your Fermi Dirac distribution will be how will that be? I will put it like that E f is here, your Fermi Dirac distribution will be something like this. I am sorry, 
the problem of not drawing it beforehand. So, if this is 1 there, what happened? I am taking a bit time, I hope you do not mind this. So, I have this uh, just one minute, okay. Take it once again. See, what I am trying to draw is the Fermi Dirac uh, distribution on this graph, where that is the Fermi level, okay. And now you will have the line there, energy. This will be half here, like that, probability of occupation. That is the F e. What about density of states? In the conduction band, it is continuous, but the density of states is something like this 0 there and goes like that. So, the n at any e is equal to if I call this as g times e density of states g times e into F e. So, if I draw the that is this is the probability, this is the density of okay, that is at the conduction bandage probability of uh, density of states is 0, it keeps on increasing, but probability keeps on increasing. So, your net distribution comes like this something like that. Okay. See, this, this is 0, probability is there, but so the, uh, the if I go from here to here, if I draw the product these two things together, okay, that will be 0 here, it will increase then go up, go down like that. It is even though you find out effective density of state with respect to conduction band, okay, the actual distribution will be like this. There will be 0 here number of electrons as you go away from the conduction band, it will slightly increase then fall down to 0. See product of probability because the probability increases I am sorry, probability decreases, density of states increases. Product actually goes through a peak somewhere here. So, now let us go back to this diagram. Now, I have drawn that here. This is the density electron distribution here. Okay. When you integrate the whole thing, you get that N c. You find out effective, effective density of electrons when you find out, you integrate the whole thing there. Okay. So, here you can see now under thermal equilibrium conditions, you have got this distribution like this, which is above that here. So, all those electrons here can move that side. All those electrons from the metal here under thermal equilibrium, when the Fermi level has equalized, definitely the number of electrons which are able to cross from here to here must be equal to number of electrons crossing from this side to this side. Okay, I can write a, I write say that the current density due to the electrons from moving from the semiconductor to the metal because they have got energy above the barrier. This is a barrier is I can write it as Q the charge of electrons n density of electrons here. Whatever electrons are available here will have thermal energy or thermal velocity V x in that direction because we are taking one dimensional case. So, across that barrier, how many electrons per second are crossing that will give rise to current density. Okay. So, I can find out this current I naught if I know how many electrons are present here, because all of them can move here. If you plot the electron density from this end to that end, See, we put it as a depleted layer. When we say it is a depleted layer, the implication is there are no electrons, but from here to here, if you go, there is a potential variation. If there is a potential variation like this, plus minus, that means electron concentration is decreasing exponentially with, with respect to that. So, if the drop from here to here is V b i, okay, from that point to that point, if it is V b i, 
the electron concentration just at the edge of this junction metal semiconductor junction will be whatever electron concentration there in the semiconductor bulk multiplied by the bulk is n, uh, uh, n n electron concentration n region multiplied by e to the power of minus b b i is the potential drop built in potential n n into e to the power of minus b b i by b t b t is k t by q this is the Boltzmann's law when there is no current flow I can say their carrier concentration is that. Now, all those electrons are having thermal energy there because of that they are above this barrier. So, those electrons can cross from here okay, if they are uh, if you have a directed field they will move in that direction or it will moving up and down. So, we are considering that uh, the electrons are moving here with the velocity v of x. So, the current is q n into v that I think you that is a basic equation which we use even by deriving the MOSFET equation charge into charge density into velocity that is the current density I multiply by area I get the current. So, from the semiconductor to the metal there will be current I naught. What is the current flowing from here to here? You do not have to calculate because you know the current net current is 0. So, from here all these electrons which have high energy should give exactly opposite opposite current. So, what we are saying is when the energy band diagram is like this under thermal equilibrium conditions, there is exchange of electrons free exchange from this side to that side and uh, since the net current is 0 whatever is injected from metal to semiconductor is balanced by whatever injected is from semiconductor to the metal. <coughs> okay. So, this is the energy band diagram under thermal uh, diagram under thermal equilibrium conditions. Now, let us see <coughs> what happens when I have bias condition. How does it work out as rectifying junction? So, I hope these diagrams are all clear. Electron distribution as a function of energy here and here. Now, what we have shown is whatever I have discussed there, put it in terms of equation. We are considering only this now, okay. that is n of x is like this, j naught from metal to semiconductor to the metal is this, q n into v of x and n s is equal to n n into e to the power minus v b t k t. We are trying to make it uh, compact. So, what is n n? In the n type material, the electron concentration is equal to effective density of states into E c minus C f by k t minus. This is the standard formula. Okay. So, that is the standard formula which is uh, I have substituted for n n this term into e to the power minus k t. I have restated whatever I have written there by substituting for n n. Okay. Now, what is this quantity e to the power minus e c minus e f into e to the power minus q v b i by v t? What is that quantity? E c minus e f is this, q v b i is this and e c minus e f plus q v b i is this quantity and that quantity is nothing but phi b n. So, what we are telling is this whole thing can be put as n c into e to the power of minus y b n by k t because sum of these two is that okay, that is y b n. So, that makes it simple that means electron concentration there here is equal to n c e to the power of minus y b n by k t. Okay. Now, the j naught what was j naught we said q n s into v of x n s is this one q is there I substitute for n s from here. See 1 and 2 n s is given by this. So, that is q n c into e to the power minus by b and the k t by b x. Same thing I have read it up. Okay. So, this quantity inside here is decided by the density of states and the velocity of thermal velocity of electrons in that direction. And so, j naught now you can see 
usually what you refer to in the diode J naught, you will see that this also for this diode also that is the reverse saturation current, we will see how it is that depends upon the barrier height phi b n and phi b n depends upon phi m minus chi phi m minus chi. Okay. So, you j naught will be lower if phi b n is larger, j naught will be higher if phi b n is reduced, low barrier height j naught will be higher. Okay. Now, you can see that if you have a diode which is J naught is very large, it looks like a very leaky diode will look like a ohmic contact. So, you can straight away say that if I make a device where the phi b n is low, it look closer to a ohmic contact. If I make a, phi, a device with the phi b n large, J naught will be low, it will look it will be closer to a rectifying contact. We will see how it is. Okay. So, now I just rewriting this again J naught is equal to that quantity. Now, we have to recall some of the formulae that are available already in the basic device physics that you have studied earlier. N c is related to the effective mass of electrons k t and Planck's constant and this 2 3 by 2. So, N c is that quantity. I am just substituting now for this and V of x for the electron gas, the thermal energy is root k t by 2 pi m n star. Multiply these two together and simplify, you get some constant a star. All this, you know all these things will have be constant. Here t to the power 3 by 2 is there, here t to the power half, you get t square. And other things are constant that I pulled it out as a star. A star is this quantity. Okay. What is m n star? Effective mass. Effective mass is mass of electrons in the semiconductor, which will be different from the mass of electron in free space, because of the presence of uh, uh, built in electric fields when the atom moves, when the electron moves from one location to another location. So, to make life easy for us, so that we can use, still use uh, uh, Newton's force, loss of force, you make use of force is equal to mass into acceleration. Talk of effective mass. So, that is effective mass. Okay. So, it, it is A star that constant T squared comes from here into the same thing whatever you written there is here. J naught will be A star T squared e to the power minus 5 P n by K T. And A star when you substitute for all these quantities q k pi etcetera you will get 120 m n star by m naught ampere per centimeter square per degree kelvin square. Why I put it in the form is the m n star by m n m naught depends upon the semiconductor. If you take silicon it will be almost close to 1 okay, slightly different. If you take gallium arsenide it will be 0.067 that will be very very small. So, this a star in the case of silicon will be close to 120, slightly smaller, but in the case of gallium arsenide, it will be 120 into 0.067, it will be about 8 or so. So, that A star will be 8 amperes per centimeter square per k square for gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide. So, that is why I put this, because you do not have to remember every time all the whole thing, 120 m n star by m n. You will know the effective mass in terms of mass usually, so you can get that constant. Calculation becomes ready for you. T squared into this. Phi bn pi minus chi. Okay. So, that is what you get for we have calculated this, this is the value that current that will be transferred from here to here and here to here that is J naught, that current is 0, thermal equilibrium. Now, reverse bias. I will at least be able to finish this. And the reverse bias, <coughs> what happens? If you see here, the Fermi level was here. When the reverse bias, what happens to that? How do you reverse bias? Like in the PN junction, P and N, if you have, here you have metal and N. I make this N side plus, I apply voltage VR into that. 
the applied voltage will not appear across the metal where the huge current will flow through the thing. So, because it is like a metal and a insulating layer here depletion layer. So, the entire voltage adds on to the built in potential across this depletion layer widens the voltage drop across this layer increases becomes equal to V B i V B i what was the polarity plus here minus here plus minus you can see that plus here minus here band is like that it is adds on to that depletion layer widens okay? that is the reverse wise situation. So, this portion I am keeping it as it is with respect to that the voltage has increased here that means, the band bending has taken much more. So, this earlier this Fermi level was coinciding with that, but now it has moved down by an amount equal to V B i uh, V r. So, entire energy band diagram originally whatever was coming up here in this portion has come down by equal to V B i. So, if you go beyond the depletion layer the charge distribution remains the same thing. Okay? Just I, I do not know where you can go quickly back see whatever was here this portion has been pulled down. This in the neutral region this equilibrium diagram whatever I have drawn holds good, but beyond that point I do not draw the Fermi level, but that has no meaning really you call it as quasi Fermi level. So, I just draw it here and here in this portion it will be bend uh, moved down because the voltage has increased that is moved down. Now, what has happened to the charge distribution now? On the left hand side the barrier has not changed that is the key thing. The p n junction barrier will change on the p side as well as on the n side. Here the barrier does not change because there is no voltage drop in the metal. So, barrier remains the same thing. So, all these electrons which are able to give rise to J naught or I naught from due to transfer of electrons from here to here they will be there. So, I put a current here in this direction implying electrons are flowing in that direction. See if the electrons are crossing from metal to semiconductor current is from the semiconductor to the metal. Okay. So, there is that I naught component is still present to transfer of electrons from the semi metal to the semiconductor. But what has happened to the electrons here? The electron distribution from the bulk is the same thing number of electrons available in the semiconductor in the neutral region that has not changed that distribution remains the same thing. Since you have pulled the potential energy down this actually is the energy distribution from here up to this point only. So, the maximum number of the electrons are available only up to certain height in the energy beyond this there are no electrons. So, these electrons when you apply sufficient reverse bias they are not able to cross from right to left. So, whatever J naught was there from the right to left or the whatever electrons were there from right to left is brought down to 0, but whatever electrons transporting from metal semiconductor are still there. That means, there is a net transfer of electrons from the metal to the semiconductor there is no transfer of electrons from the semiconductor to the metal. So, whatever was transferred from the metal to the semiconductor was I naught, but I put the I naught as the physical direction. Physical direction is the opposite to the transfer of electrons. Okay. So, you will have a current in that direction for this supply voltage to the metal giving rise to that same J naught whatever we have calculated. So, with that I think we have just gone through the basic principles involved in the reverse bias operation or the thermal equilibrium situation of the metal semiconductor contact. More details we will discuss in our forward bias how it works the great fire we will discuss in our next discussion.